Um, I rise to contribute on behalf of the Greens to the Energy Security Corporation Bill 2024. And I just want to say at the outset, um, congratulations to the Minister for Energy um, for her work on this. Um, and quite frankly, even though I'm going to be speaking very stridently about the crisis we find ourselves in, um, I genuinely 100% believe, as do the Greens, that the only hope we have is Labor government in minority with the crossbench in this state. Um, and continued pressure on the federal Labor government is our only hope. Um, as Antonio Guterres said about the year 2023, um, unfortunately, because we are on a highway to climate hell um, and with our foot on the accelerator. So when I hear the, I heard a former speaker um, for the opposition talking about um, a, a raft of, of funding investments in clean energy as if that was a problem. Um, that is quite shocking to me. I'm not suggesting for a minute that we are not closely monitoring the government in terms of the actual delivery of what these enormous aims that we have to have and that we have to deliver. But I tell you what, having Lots of money invested in clean energy is not something that we are concerned about at all. It's a very good thing. Um, Mr Speaker, I really wonder how many speeches. I've been here nearly 10 years. I only got into politics because of climate change. And um, it is actually very heartening to me when I see this level of investment. Um, I know I note the work of our spokesperson in the other place, Abigail Boyd, MLC. Um, there are some amendments that I know she's seeking in the other place, but the spirit, um, the money is on the table and certainly the spirit of this um, is incredibly welcome. Which isn't to say that the coalition um, in terms of putting forward renewable energy zones before they, their counterparts federally have completely lost their minds um, in terms of reinvigorating the horrendous, you know, their version of climate denial, which is now nuclear denial. Um, well, leaving that aside, there was good work done, but quite frankly, um, we did not see the money and we did not see the detail. So we welcome um, this bill to establish the Energy Security Corporation, and we particularly welcome the, the seed money of a billion dollars. That is money on the table, um, and, and obviously we'll continue to monitor how that rolls out. Mr Speaker, 2023 had the highest temperatures in living memory, but will be the coolest on the planet for the next 50 years. That is what the climate scientists are telling us. The wildfires in Canada, just for one example, were the worst ever recorded with 16 and a half million hectares of forest uh, destroyed. And I've got family in the north there. And honestly, the, um, that is just shocking beyond belief that seven to eight billion tonnes of carbon dioxide between January and October 2023 was emitted. Mr Speaker, what the climate scientists are telling us, and I encourage everyone as a mandatory reading to read Joelle Gurgis's, um, who's the lead author for the IPCC's sixth assessment report, her essay entitled Highway to Hell, um, should be compulsory in every school and every politician because 2023 scared the hell out of every climate scientist because the trajectory the graphs were completely blown out of the water. The temperatures in the atmosphere and the temperatures in the, in the ocean were well beyond anything that they had comprehended. Uh, Mr Speaker, before COVID, we know that two thirds of people in our communities were very concerned about climate change. Um, and we saw a change of government, not just in this state, but federally. Um, and also we saw the rise of the Teals and progressive independents very committed to, climate ch to strong action on climate change. We also saw what we thought was the coalition um, actually coming on board. However, with the cost of living crisis um, and massive misinformation, um, where we find ourselves is the captured, absolutely captured coalition party at federal level um, and here, captured by the coal and gas industry. 
Mr Speaker, we want to amend this to ensure that that $1 billion can never be used for investment in coal or gas or native forest logging. That is what that is the amendment will be moving in the other place. You can't cut emissions with one hand and open new coal mines with the other. Um, you need to commit and execute. Labor with the Greens and independents can deliver this, even with the federal LNP kowtowing to their donor lobbyists as usual. Adaptation is in fact, and for my community who have been reeling, and the member for Lismore, member for Tweed, member for Clarence, and I know and other members across the chamber, for 2023, or 2022 and 2023, we have seen the front line of climate change. And that is on the back of the black summer bushfires. So we're in no doubt of what's coming for us. We are in it. Um, and we've seen um, a, a, a really measured, we've seen strong response um, from Labor in terms of su supporting the future of the, of the modelling on the Queensland Reconstruction Authority with the New South Wales Reconstruction Authority. It is going slow, it is a big ship, but we are getting there. But quite frankly, adaptation is the action of the defeated. It is towns and villages becoming doomsday preppers and by doomsday, I mean ca catastrophic weather and extreme heat preparation. Adaptation is the action of the defeated. So we are a, a, gen we are a generation on the threshold of being the ones who seal the fate of our children and our grandchildren for, they estimate, for hundreds of years. Um, Mr Speaker, while we support any investment in the rollout of renewable energy, we hold some concerns about the corporation in its current structure. And that's why we're moving some amends in the other place. Another significant concern is that it isn't designed to create any new public ownership in the energy system. And I was pleased to hear the opposition spokesperson talking about the renewable energy grid, which is going to require that every single household virtually in New South Wales or certainly each neighbourhood is going to have to have battery storage. We welcome the uh, news of a rebate for batteries, but we must accelerate this, not just because it's the grid of the future, but also because these weather systems are not going to wait. They're not going to wait for us to get it together. And my people want to get off grid so that they are not without telecommunications, that they're not without electricity for months. My landslide communities, like Upper Main Arm, are still not able to get the school bus up their road and they are still living in very dangerous conditions. These are people whose houses fell down the side of a mountain. So we are in it and we uh, adaptation is defeat. We must do everything we can to reduce our emissions. I believe that this energy minister has that goal and that is her passion. Um, and I am, we are very pleased with this level in, of investment. Uh, Mr Speaker, we, do, we are in the process, as I say, of negotiating amendments, because um, we are looking to ensure that the corporation cannot, and I repeat, in any circumstances, invest in coal, gas or native forest logging. We have to, those things have to end. And Mr Speaker, when we reflect on the attitudes of the Duttons of the world, I normally never name an adversary, but I tell you what, how can he look his own children and his own grandchildren in the face um, and still be suggesting that we go down a path of nuclear energy at this stage of the game? Maybe 20 years ago. I, I'm not saying, no one is saying that at some point, obviously other developed nations have gone down that path. There's lots of reasons that it's illegal in this state. And I do commend the Premier for staring down um, those overtures. And I feel very sorry indeed for the electorates, for those members who were announced that they're going to have potentially nuclear reactors in their electorates. Good God, how is that um, uh, how on earth is that where we are today? Mr Speaker, um, I do remind the House that we are, if 2023 had the highest temperatures in living memory, what we are told is that this will, though, be the coolest year on the planet 
for at least the next 50 years. So let's get on with it. We are here to help you in any way to deliver energy security um, in renewable energy, which is the future.